which has always been a gentle croc, they, they, they're coming back. I mean, this was an emaciated croc. It was in terrible condition, and he's gradually coming back. Lawrence Enriquez has what you can only describe as a very unique passion. He's devoted more than a decade to raising and caring for Jamaica's endangered crocodiles. It's not easy, and it's come at a personal cost. It cost me a marriage. It cost me a marriage, yeah. But Enriquez is admittedly much more comfortable around his crocodiles than he is around people. Come on. There are dozens of rescued juvenile crocs here. Others were born at roadside attractions and brought to the sanctuary. Enriquez is right at home, walking into their pen, standing in the ankle deep water with the animals all around him and feeding them chicken. He goes through about 80 chickens a week. Not all the crocs are just ankle biters. There are a few rescues that are, to say the least, quite large. There's Rogue. He's 12 feet long and 700 pounds. His favorite pastime, sunning himself. Another named Blacks is, Lawrence says, like a pet. He come and sit in the front room and watch TV. Lawrence founded and runs, with the help of grants, donations, a couple workers and volunteers, a crocodile rescue operation and sanctuary. So the idea is to continue the work, basically to see if we can keep this animal as part of Jamaica without it basically being confined to a, a zoo or a captive environment. The sanctuary sits on donated land on Jamaica's northeast coast, a remote spot called Holland Bay, where inlets and tributaries lead to the ocean. One day, some of Lawrence's crocodiles may be released here or other spots designated as protected areas. Joey Brown is curator of the Hope Zoo in Kingston. Is a place like this helpful? When we do get some more protected habitat or suitable release sites, these crocs will be ready to be released into the wild and be able to forage and hunt on their own. Um, and so what Lawrence has done here is just amazing because they have adults, you know, that have been, whether they've been nuisance crocodiles that have been rescued, um, but they also have breeding adults. So eventually when we can start breeding our own captive crocs and then reintroducing them to the wild. The crocs in Jamaica are in the American crocodile family. They range from southern Florida throughout the Caribbean, coastal Central America, and even the north coast of South America. They can live up to 70 years. Here in Jamaica, the pressure on the species has grown over the decades. The best estimate on how many are left? Less than 1,000. And that's conservative. I personally would regard this animal in Jamaica now as critically endangered. If you think about the issues that really affect them, it's, it's clearly what? It's the poaching, but it's loss of habitat over generations, right? It's loss of habitat, you know, human encroachment into crocodile habitat. You know, farms are spreading, more resorts are getting built, and so this is bringing more people kind of around crocodile habitat. You know, they say, you always hear the term nuisance crocodile. Yeah. Which, which I don't really like. I mean, because it's not, the crocodiles aren't the nuisance, it's the humans that are actually the nuisance. And the animals have paid dearly. Many times they're simply killed because the people are afraid of them. Treya Picking is an environmental officer with the National Environmental Protection Agency, NEPA. There is, first of all, there's a ingrained fear of reptiles in our society. So from the little lizard on the ground, to the iguana, to the crocodile Jamaicans, a lot of Jamaicans fear these animals. And with the mission to manage and protect Jamaica's land, wood and water, the National Environment and Planning Agency, NEPA, is doing just that. NEPA has run campaigns to educate Jamaicans and dispel myths. Ricardo Miller is with NEPA's Ecosystems Management Branch. A lot of people think that we are protecting the animals more than we're protecting them. You know, the animal has more rights than them, which is not the case. What we're trying to do is to get people to understand and to be able to coexist with these animals. What people don't see or don't realize in Jamaica that the crocodiles we have here are extremely docile and they're not man-eaters. And so there's a lot of misinformation out there. Crocodiles, if you leave them alone, you know, 99% of the time, they just, they want nothing to do with people. So 
when we can kind of, whether it's putting a baby crocodile in a kid's hands, yeah. that's when you can kind of change people's minds. Sadly, it won't change the minds of poachers. A warning. These are pictures you may not want to see. Many of these images are disturbing. Crocodiles cut up for their meat. Sometimes nothing is left but the head. The problem, wildlife officials here say, is not going away. If anything, it's getting worse. Since the early 2000s, for some reason, you know, crocodile meat has become a thing. And it has been fueled by the fact that it's, uh, well, not the fact, about this myth of it being an aphrodisiac and being seen as a delicacy amongst certain groups of people. Um, so it started to increase its value on the black market. And as a result, the demand has been growing. And so, you know, more crocodiles have been getting killed as a result. Because the crocodiles fall under the Wildlife Protection Act, poachers can face some minimal jail time and or a fine that amounts to about 750 U.S. dollars. That's not much when the meat sells for $2,000 a pound on the black market. And it's always hard to find these people who do it because all you're left with is this mutilated crocodile body and you don't know the first where, you know, the first place to look. In other countries, they, they actually do eat reptilian yeah, sure. meat, but Jamaica has always been very conservative on what type of meat they eat. We, we are usually mostly chicken and beef, right? Yeah. Um, so to see people starting to go for crocodile was, you know, a wake up call for us. NEPA says buyers, primarily Asians, both in Jamaica and other countries, are driving up the price. Because so little is known about the actual size of the crocodile population on the island, the impact of the poaching and the habitat loss is difficult for the wildlife experts to wrap their arms around. Before you can really understand what needs to be done to protect the American crocodile in Jamaica, researchers need to understand how many there are out there. And that's going to be the subject of a major collaborative study. Wildlife biologists and conservationists are going into known crocodile habitats and remote areas where they might oh, be boy. to count the animals. We hope to do this for approximately two years. So we get an idea of how many crocodiles we have out there. And then we'll really know what to do next in terms of a conservation action plan for the species and how quickly we really need to act in order to save our crocodiles. At the Hope Zoo in Kingston, where Joey Brown is curator, the crocodiles here lead a pretty good protected life. But if the wild species is allowed to collapse, Brown worries it will dramatically and negatively alter the ecosystem. Well, they are kind of crucial to the ecosystem. You know, a lot of these crocs, after research has shown, they're kind of keystone species in the ecosystem, kind of helping regulate the food chain. You remove them, you're affecting birds, you're affecting invertebrates, and so they're very crucial to have in these environmental systems. Crocodiles are also, experts like Brown say, environmental cleaners. They eat dead and dying animals, keeping the rivers and estuaries balanced and disease-free. The mud holes they dig become, in times of drought, sanctuaries for other animals. But Lawrence says he's already seeing something frightening, something that could hasten the crocodile's demise. What I am noticing, which is a, a worrying trend, and it's not unique, is the fact that I'm not seeing many smaller animals out there now. So the last three, four years, or even five years of reproduction have been exceptionally bad. The issues are daunting, but that does not mean you give up. That simply would not work for Enriquez. So I think we have a chance here. Um, it's not going to be easy, but I think it can be done. And I think we can maintain a population of this species in the wild successfully. For Lawrence, there can be no other way. This is our national animal, not the iguana, yeah, yeah. not the sea turtle. Yeah. You know this you... is our national animal. After all, what would he do without his beloved crocodiles? All right. Yeah. Good boy. Yeah.